Hey guys, Proper English here. Over the last couple of showcase videos, I've been showing you this adder that I've been developing. It's a fast pistonless adder. This one is the latest version. It is six ticks now for eight bits. It's two wide tileable, so it's pretty cool. And today we're going to get into how this thing works. So first I'm gonna give you a quick speed demonstration to show you that it is in fact six ticks. And then I'm going to try to explain how this thing works. And now when I get into the explanation, it's going to get a little tricky because there are some fairly complex concepts that I've used here. But I'm going to present it in a clear way, so hopefully you guys will be able to follow along without much difficulty. I'm going to take it step by step and it should be good. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments because there are some cool things that I've done here that can be applied elsewhere. So it might be worth checking out some of the explanation too. So let's get started. All right, so before we get into how this thing works, let's take a look at a speed test. So I've got my little setup over here with the note blocks, one connected to the 8th bit. We do have a carry out over here, but we're going to use the 8th bit because that's slower. We'll actually do one other speed test after this because there is one thing that's slower than carrying to the 8th bit, but we'll start with this. So I've got six ticks worth of repeaters over here. So four tick and two tick, but we're subtracting one okay on the input so this is really going to be representative of five ticks of delay but I said this was a six tick adder well we're gonna take a look at that in a second first we're going to take a look at carrying over to the eighth bit which takes five ticks and we can flip this lever and see it happen and there we go so those both went off at the same time that's what we want to see but it turns out that there's one thing that's slower than carrying to the eighth bit and that is these bits turning off and really this is part of carrying to the eighth bit so any of the bits that have this torch over here can actually take six ticks okay so what we're gonna do is we're going to remove a block here and we're gonna put one in over here and I'm gonna show you why this is and why we need this torch in a little bit and uh, and yes yeah, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to invert this okay so we wanna see this turn off so if we invert it here, then, uh, then that will represent that particular operation, okay? So that'll represent this bit turning off. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we're going to make this an eight tick repeater, okay? So now we've got one tick over here, one tick over here, we're subtracting those two, and then there's six ticks of adder delay, okay? So let's start by turning this off and now when we turn it on, there we go. Same time, so that was six ticks, and that is the speed of the adder. And so now, let's take a look at what's going on in this adder. So I'm gonna go through a little bit of what this adder is, so like what each layer is and things like that, and then we're going to get into some of the little tricks that I used to make it faster in Minecraft, okay? So let's go for that. All right, so before we get into any of the specific redstone tricks that I've used, let's take a look at the general layout of a carry look ahead adder, and we'll talk about what it is, and then we can look at the delay and how I've spread it across this whole thing. And so the first thing we should talk about is what ripple carry is. So in a ripple carry adder, to know the carry of a given bit, let's say bit three, we need to know all of the carries for the previous bits. So we need to know the carry from bit zero, bit one and bit two before we can get to bit three. And in look ahead, we don't need that, okay? So we don't need a finalized carry for all the previous bits before we can get our carry from bit three, and that makes it way faster. And so what I've done here is I've set up the general layout of one. So we've got a half adder on the front, then we've got all these look ahead layers in the middle. That's what does the look ahead logic. And then we've got an XNOR on the end. And so in an adder that hasn't been optimized for Minecraft at all. We'll have a two tick half adder on the front. We'll have two ticks here, two ticks here, and two ticks here because there are AND gates in all of these. And two ticks for the XNOR on the end. But what we can do is we can use some special tricks. And what I've done is I've managed to get the look ahead layers one and two to happen at the exact same time for a delay of one tick. And then I got the third look ahead layer to happen at one tick. And doing this was actually a lot more complicated than it sounds. And uh, before we get into that, 
let's take a look at how some of these gates work. Okay, so we'll take a look at the speeds of different gates and which ones are optimal uh, for different situations. So let's go for that. All right, so let's take a look at some logic gates and we'll see which ones are best to use. We'll start off by jumping into the middle and taking a look at an AND gate, okay? So in an AND gate, when both inputs are on, the output is on. We can turn one of these off, all right? This torch turns on and it turns this torch off and the output's off. The problem is that takes two ticks, one for this torch and one for this torch, and that's slower than we'd like. But if we come over here, we can take a look at a NOR gate, okay? So with NOR, both inputs have to be off for the output to be on. And we can flip this lever over here and see that if one input is on, the output turns off, okay? That would happen with this input too, or if both are on. And, uh, and yeah, so these guys over here, the NOR and the AND are kind of similar because in this case, both inputs have to be off for the output to be on. In this case, both inputs have to be on for the output to be on. But this one's faster, so we can manipulate the logic so we have this and we don't need to use this extra torch over here. And that is really cool. Now, we can get a similar situation over here. These guys are actually also both better than this, uh, this AND gate over here. All right, so there's an OR over here. This one takes zero ticks, but we run into some other issues with this. Um, because we still need to extend signals and things like that. In some situations, this is super ideal, but in others, it's not your, uh, your best choice. All right, so if both of these are off, the output is off. In this case, we've got a NAND gate, okay? So in a NAND gate, when both inputs are on, the output is off. So it's kind of like the OR over here, except the only situation in which the output is off is, uh, is when these are both on, all right? And, uh, and yeah, so this one also takes one tick. And we can manipulate all the logic and make use of the fastest gates to get the fastest speeds. But there are some tricks to this because, especially in this particular situation when we're dealing with this look-ahead logic, we run into some complications, and now we can take a look at those. All right, so I've got part of my adder over here. We've got a half adder back here and then we've got the look ahead logic for the first two layers over here. And so let's take a look at where some of these carries come from. When one of these guys is on, it tells us a carry is coming through. So the first thing we'll do is we'll turn both inputs for bit zero on. And we can see that this AND gate over here turns on and we're carrying. That comes directly from the half adder and each of these bits has that connection to their respective carry. But what happens when we're propagating a carry? Well. Now, because we're generating from bit zero, this guy's off. But we're not saying to propagate from bit one yet. That's this line right here. This tells us whether we're propagating or not. And we can see that this comes along here and it feeds into a NOR gate with the generate from bit zero. So let's tell bit one to propagate this. So we'll turn that guy on. And so now this is off and the NOR gate can turn on and there we go, we're carrying. And if we take a look down here, we're actually ORing this from the carry that gets generated directly from bit one. And that makes sense because these guys are both going to the same place. But now what happens when we're propagating it even further? Well, this is where I've started to make things fast. So normally what you do with one of these things is you would use this signal over here to control the propagation for bits three and four. So this carry goes to bit three, this carry goes to bit four. All right, and, uh, and yeah, so what I've done is rather than use this guy, which would take an extra tick, is I've kind of duplicated some things over here. So I've taken this ORD line over here and I've run it into another NOR gate. And now this one is also NORed with the propagate from bit two, okay? So if one of these guys is on, now, this guy can uh, turn on, this torch turns on, and we're propagating the carry one more. But I've also needed to set up a, uh, a propagation coming directly from the generate in bit one, all right? So let's take a look at that. So right now I'm going to turn off these guys, and what I'll do is I will turn 
this one on. So right now we're generating from bit one and we're propagating, okay, uh, from bit two. And so if we take a look over here, well, now this torch is on. That's because this one down here, this line, comes from over here. This is the generate from bit one. And then up top we have a NOR gate, okay, so it's set into a NOR gate with the propagate from bit two. All right, so we're generating from bit one, propagating from bit two. The carry over here goes over to bit three. And uh, yeah, so that's not too bad. Then we're really just doing the same exact thing over here with the, uh, with the, the, uh, the fourth bit, our bit three. And, uh, and yeah, so we can, uh, we can take a look at that. Let's start a carry from bit zero. All right, then we're going to propagate, propagate, and then we're gonna propagate. And so now this line turns off, all right? And so this torch can come on. So uh, yeah, this thing is pretty cool. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this logic. It, uh, it's a little tricky, a little hard to, uh, to follow, but if you guys have any questions about this, ask me, because I thought it was a, a pretty cool idea, and it's sort of a neat way to go about optimizing this thing. And so that's one of the tricks that I used. Now, let's take a look at the other trick that I used. All right, so let's take a look at how I got the third layer of logic to be one tick. Now, this gets a little tricky, so we're gonna go through the basics, then we'll take a look at it in the context of the adder over there. We're not gonna go into crazy detail because, like I said, it's kind of complex and kind of ridiculous. I mean, yeah, you, you'll see, it's it's insane. And, uh, and yeah, so I've got a NAND gate over here, and this line of redstone over here. And I want you to think of these as two parts of the same carry. All right, so normally we would or these together. And the NAND gate is going to give us a carry when the output is off. This guy over here is gonna give us a carry when it's on. And that's a problem if we're oring these together because they're two different states. And we're not going to or them together. But before we get into that, let's take a look at what happens if I invert this because you might be thinking well oh can't you just invert this and use the carry uh, as an off when when we're getting a carry and the thing is you can't because well, don't need that guy there um, because when we or these together well if one of these is off okay so the output is on no carry and the other one is on so the output is off. So let's uh, let's throw a repeater down here so we can really see it. So right now the NAND gate is is off. So that's saying we do have a carry. This guy's saying we don't. Well, this one overrides this one. We never see the absence of the signal because we have a signal. That's a problem. And so what I've done is I've worked with this situation and kept them separate and used some special logic to get this to work properly. And so let's take a look at that. All right, so like I said, I'm not going to go into crazy detail over here, but we will take a look at how some of these things work. So this part over here, this is the output of the NAND gate, all right? And we're running that into a does not imply gate over here because we can't put it into our normal XOR. We need special logic to tell us whether or not this carry is going to mean that this bit is on or if it's gonna propagate further. All right, so that's what this does over here. We don't need to worry about that too much. Now, the other thing that needs to be taken into account is that there are some special situations that arise when we split things up like this. And let's take a look at that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to start a carry from this bit. We're gonna propagate it over one for now. And we'll see that this guy over here turns on, that's our does not imply gate because this input is off and this input to the does not imply gate is on. All right, so we see this torch coming on. And so now let's take a look at what happens if we go one further. We'll come back here and turn one of these guys on. And so now we're propagating one more bit and we see that, okay, so it comes out over here that's just what we want to say. So now this guy's on and this guy's off. But there's one issue. So if I didn't have this torch here, this guy would turn on. Because since we're splitting up the carry, we don't have certain signals controlling this thing over here. 
and that's a problem. So we need to add that back in. And that is where the sixth tick is. All right, so what I've done is I used a special XNOR, the one that I showed you the other day, where it has a one tick NOR. And by using that one, I can add this torch here, and we don't have to worry about that adding a seventh tick. It only gets to six. And that is how this adder is six ticks. And so yeah, that is pretty much how I did this. Like I said, this stuff got pretty tricky, um, but I hope you were able to follow some of it. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments because I'm happy to answer. And if you're interested in learning more about how carry look ahead adders work, let me know because, oh, hey, look at that. Well, we lost our connection. It doesn't really matter now anyway. Um, but yeah, so we, uh, we can get into that if you're interested in it. And so let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.